morning. Welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are with us today. And thank you so much for wearing your masks. As I'm sure you've seen in the bulletin, we are back to wearing our masks at all times while in the building. Um, except for, you know, when we're standing far enough away from you, the worship leaders will take our masks off so you can see us and hear us better. Um, but otherwise, we're wearing our masks so that we can protect each other as best we can during this Delta variant season. Um, and I also would like to ask you to fill out your tear and share, which is on the back of your bulletin, and drop that in the offering plate on your way out after worship service so that we know that you were here and we can touch base. All right, I believe that's everything to get us started. So let us begin with the order for confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out 
before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. We read the psalm responsively by whole verse. I invite you to join in on the bold verses. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to erase the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. God will keep safe their bones, not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not that, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back, and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? 
Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There are a couple often used verses in our scripture today. I'm sure that you caught them as you heard them. There's Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And John 6, 68. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Joshua verse can be found in many homes as entryway art or maybe sewn onto pillows for the couch. Reminders to those who enter about what matters to this household. And we just sang the John verse, announcing the gospel reading, which holds the words of eternal life. These words are familiar, words that are part of our larger story as God's people. In the Joshua text, Joshua has called together the 12 tribes of Israel as they prepare finally to enter the promised land. They are in Shechem, the place where God first spoke to Abram before he was Abraham. This is holy ground. Standing in this place, Joshua tells the Israelites it's time to make a choice, to choose whom they will serve in their new home. Now, traditionally, the people of Joshua's time were loyal to the gods of the region. As the Israelites moved into Canaan, it would be culturally typical that their allegiance would shift to the local gods. But God, their God, is not typical and Joshua reminds them of that. Joshua recounts what God has done for God's people. In the verses that are not included in today's reading, verses 3 to 13, Joshua talks about Abraham and his children, then moves to Moses and Aaron, describing the escape from Egypt and the time in the wilderness. Joshua reminds the Israelites of the battles that they fought in the desert, of the protection God gave them against their enemies of the land and the food and the prosperity God brought them so they could arrive safely at Canaan's door. God moved with them through many regions, across boundaries, and did not ever leave them. This God, their God, has chosen them. Now, whom will they choose to serve? This question is all-encompassing. This word, serve, means more than showing up to worship or serving on a committee. It means to serve, to worship, to work with one's whole self, to dedicate one's life entirely. Joshua asks everyone assembled, to whom will you dedicate your life? And Joshua answers the question first. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua's experiences with God have shown him the way forward. The old model of serving the gods of the region is no longer viable. Joshua has come to know God, the God of the Israelites, the God who has traveled with them, provided for them, who has not forsaken them. The relationship that God has formed with Joshua, with his ancestors and his family, has revealed that this God is the true God. All of these reasons, all of these experiences are the why stories that lead Joshua to declare his dedication. Why choose God? Because... Joshua declares, God has chosen us in word and deed. Now, Joshua does not then insist that everyone else claim God as their God. They can make their own choices. But their responses show the same understanding, the same relationship, the same why that Joshua describes. The tribes agree with him, remembering that God has delivered them, protected them, and cared for them. In the midst of their 40 difficult years in the desert, in times of hunger and war and doubt and fear, God has been with them. They've experienced God's love. And that relationship that God has created has made the difference. They know the true God, and they trust that God will continue to be faithful. The tribes declare their dedication. We also will serve the Lord, for God is our God. To be fair, this is an easy situation in which to make a decision. They have experienced the fulfillment of God's promises and they are about to walk into their new home, a safe space just for them. God is the logical choice. 
So what about making this decision when things are more difficult or complicated? In today's gospel, Jesus is speaking to a large crowd of disciples. He's been teaching things that can be confusing, hard to understand, and depending on who you are, maybe even a bit offensive. Today's declaration is especially tricky, as it sounds an awful lot like cannibalism. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. And Jesus says this to a group of devout Jews who have been taught by scripture that you never eat the blood of an animal, so the idea of consuming a human's blood is unthinkable. This teaching is difficult, they say. Who can accept it? They are offended. Many of them can't see past the words to the good news of life that Jesus is proclaiming. They seem to forget the good news that they've experienced up until now. And so, unable or unwilling to do the work of wrestling with this difficult teaching, they leave. Once the dust settles, there are 12 disciples still standing with Jesus. And Jesus turns to them and asks for their choice. Do you also wish to go away? Peter answers for them. Peter says to Jesus, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The choice is hardly a choice at all, says Peter. There is only one way to go, only one answer to give. They will choose Christ. Peter and the other 11 disciples have come to this answer, this choice, by experience, through the relationships that they have with Jesus. Jesus has spent time with his disciples, walked with them, lived with them, shared meals, taught them, joked with them, laughed with them. Jesus has built a relationship with them, and in that relationship, Jesus has shown himself to be the one with words of eternal life, the one with the truth, the Holy One of God. Of course, they also know that choosing Christ is not always the easy choice. As the disciples who have just left demonstrated, following Jesus is complicated. His teachings are difficult. His way of living is countercultural. His enacted love for God and God's people often sets him at odds with rulers and authorities. But those complicated, difficult aspects of his ministry are part of why they know that he is the Holy One of God. They have seen his love for the world lived out, regardless of personal cost. It's the relationships, built in experience, that have made the difference for both of these choices. For Joshua and the Israelites and for Peter and the disciples, God's presence in their life has opened their eyes to the truth, that God is their God, the one who created them, loves them, cares for them, is with them in joy and in difficulty. This true God is the source of eternal life, where everyone is united with God as God intended. They know this to be the truth because they have experienced it. God has chosen them, and God has been with them. So Joshua and the Israelites and Peter and the disciples declared their choices. Now the questions echo forward to us. God has chosen us and God is with us. That does not change. But we get to answer because part of God's love is letting us choose. So what do we choose? Whom shall we serve? Do we also wish to go away or do we wish to stay? and dwell with Christ, dedicating our whole lives to discipleship. As we discern our answer, we look to our own relationships with God. Like Joshua, like Peter, we recall our experiences of God working in our lives and sharing truth with us, personally and communally. We all have a story to tell. The stories that spring to mind most readily are recent. Stories of God providing in a pandemic. Stories of peace being shared in the midst of anxiety and grief. Stories of God leading us to share the gospel in surprising and exciting ways. These are good stories. And there are also older stories. Stories from our childhood, stories from dark times in our lives, stories from joyful milestones. And there are older stories still. Stories that reach back generations, back all the way to Abraham and beyond, 
these are all our stories too, because we are all part of the larger story of God's people. Some of these stories are light and easy. Stories of baptisms and friendships and meals around the table. Some are harder to tell because they involve God challenging us, calling us to go against the culture, to fight injustice, to serve those in hard places, to put others ahead of ourselves. But God is with us in these stories too, empowering us and strengthening us to work in God's name. These stories tell us the truth about God, that God has chosen us, that God is with us, that God has the words of eternal life. This all leads us as we answer those questions we hear today, our experiences, our stories, what we know about God, inform us as we choose every day whom we will serve, as we choose every day to whom we will go. And when we reflect on all that God has done, all that God is doing, all that God will do, we find ourselves answering with Joshua and the Israelites, we also will serve the Lord, for God is our God. We find ourselves answering with Peter and the disciples, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, for we have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we now profess the faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards. Protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned, and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited, and open us to their cries. Strengthen those who care for others and those in need of healing, especially Jim, Herb, Pat, Emily, Michael, Sylvia, Louise, Kathy, Bill, Steve, Julie, Margaret, Kay, Yvonne, Eddie, Eric, Mary, Bill, Madeline, Earl, Barbara, Stephen, Kathy, Ted, and Frank. Lord, in your mercy. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We pray your comfort finds Cindy Barber and all who grieve the loss of Cindy's mother, Betty Kessler. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and in life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We invite you to share that peace with one another from where you are standing. And if you're home by yourself, we invite you to give someone a call and share Christ's peace with them. You may be seated. At this time, we give thanks for the many gifts that you give to support God's ministry here at Grace. Today we want to lift up especially the considerable time and skill offered to our congregation this week by Doug Poynton and Craig Allen as they troubleshot, troubleshooted um, a number of the technological problems we have been facing so that we can continue to share the gospel in many ways. So we are really grateful for the work that you have put in to make this gospel sharing possible. We continue with the anthem.
Let us pray together. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.